Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Back by popular <laughs> demand, Nick Jones. Nice. You don't know how many requests we've had. Get, get Nick back on! There were like so many women's panties that had to change because they're getting so wet. Yeah. Because of Nick's voice, we had to be like, <laughs> we've got to have him back on. It's a constant issue for me. I, I can't get the women off me. Something I just have to do with, I guess. When you pair the beard with the voice <laughs> and the podcast. That's I'm a gonna... triple threat right there. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Nick sitting in with us again today. First, I want to give a shout out to Deltree, otherwise known as Kevin Bach on uh, Facebook. He got the question right. Name all three pieces of Triforce. <clears throat> he named all three of them. Instantly. As soon as I put the question up, it was like in, not even a minute. In record time. Yeah. So you guys got some competition out there. Don't let Deltree Kevin Bach get all the $10 gift cards. <laughs> we'll have another question later. The three Triforces are the Triforce of Power, held by Ganon, which is red. The Triforce of Wisdom, which is blue, held by Zelda. And the Triforce of Courage, which is green, held by Link. Okay, so we each had our hand uh, playing Mega Man 2 this past <coughs> week. Uh, how did you guys enjoy the game? It was fun. It was nice. I haven't played it since probably, I played this one probably 10 years ago. Uh, when you got it for the anniversary collection, played through it. Ten years, I wish it had been only ten years for me. It's probably been more like twenty years for me. Uh, ton of fun. I, I love that game. Pretty tricky at certain parts. I, I was a little jealous when uh, Brad said that he think you said you died like three times throughout the whole thing. Yeah, through the whole game I died three times. Wow. I had to use a few continues, I have to admit. <coughs> yeah, even I had, I used a bunch of continues, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Not, not only did I use continues, I used password. <laughs> <laughs> so you came back the next day, it didn't take you once <clears throat> I beat the first eight bosses, okay, this is what I did. I beat the first eight bosses, no problem, jotted down the password, because the controller that I have acts very finicky and gets stuck often. So... I get to Wiley's castle, and of course I'm sitting there rocking out to the music, not even moving. My daughter walks by <laughs> a few times, and she's like, did the game freeze? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm just listening to the music, because that music is just amazing, the Dr. Wiley stage music. Oh, God, yes. A recommendation, if you if you dig that music, check out the band Power Glove. Power Glove does a glorious rendition of the Dr. Wiley stage one which is actually stage one and two we found out actually from Mega Man 2. Definitely check that out. Uh, good listen. At one minute and four seconds into the Power Glove theme, it blows my mind every yeah. time. <laughs> it just breaks down and you just feel like you could do anything. Yep. That's like you're sure. holding the Master Sword <laughs> with the Mega Buster. But the whole thing is good though. I mean, it, it starts off with like a Iron Maiden-esque like you know, horse trotting type of thing like it's just it's so epic. The whole entire thing is, is awesome. Yeah. Uh did you guys want to talk about the order of the uh, the bosses? <coughs> yeah, let's do that. Who did you guys beat first? So the of course the first person I beat was Metal Man. Me too. I did not go to that. I I figured my list would be different from you and I remember last week you guys were saying you wanted you'd like to get Metal Man's weapon first. I went with Airman. Okay. Airman, yeah, he's weak against Mega Buster, too. Yeah, yeah. he is. That's the th For me, I have a kind of a pride thing with Mega Man. I always try to beat everything without the special weapons first. And I do remember Airman kind of being one of the, on the weaker end, so I went ahead and tried to beat him with uh, with my regular blaster. His stage, though, I, I don't like his stage. All the pits. Um, I, you know, when you first enter the stage, those things with the horns that yeah, pop up. Yeah, yeah. When you jump, every time I, I would jump over a pit, I was telling Nick this earlier, my <laughs> scrotum, I would get so tense it would make my balls hurt because I would be so anxious. And I don't know if that's how I was able to beat the game in, in only three men because I was just so tense and so into it. But it was just torturous because every time I would, even on the Bubble Man stage with the spikes, yep. when I would hardly, you know, you don't want to jump too high because you'll die, uh, I would just get all tense and my balls are just hurt and ache. <laughs> Actually, it happened the first time when my first son was born, Jordan, when I was in the room. I was so tense. I was uh, helped pushing my wife's leg back because, you know, they didn't have the stirrups in there. And boy, I, I had to take a breather because I don't know what it was, but I don't know if my thighs were clenching my sack so tight. <laughs> 
it just, I almost passed out. I just sit down and I was just sitting there like, oh, this is so much, and I'm in so much pain right now. And my wife's over there in labor, you know, dying. And she looks over and she's like, what, what's wrong? And I didn't want to tell her, oh, my nuts hurt because, you know, her whole vagina was hurting at that point. <laughs> so I was like, oh, nothing. I just, ha I, I, I just had to sit down for a minute. And then afterwards I told her and she was like, oh, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never experienced that sort of tension in my nuts. I gotta say, but I, I do, I do tense up on uh, stages like when there's pits or when there's spikes, and you know it's gonna be instant death if you fail. Um, I know what you're talking about, the little red face guys with the horns on, and there's like little birds that shoot out and they try to attack you and make you fall. The, the, thing, the thing that I don't like about those types of things, it just really tests your patience, especially with the spikes because you gotta time it. Uh, you know, you don't want to jump when the spikes are going to pop up or else you're just going to get knocked right off. And you don't want to go too soon either or else you're going to, again, run into the spikes and get knocked off. I, I wasn't a big fan of that level. You're right. The pits are a, a pain in the ass, but I didn't experience any tension in my nuts. <laughs> and then you have to ride on the clouds and make sure yeah, you hit those, right? That's that, that. I could see how that would cause a lot of tension in your nuts as well. Uh, one thing I did like about Mega Man 2, uh, as we're talking about spikes, is... In this one, if you get hit before you get into the spikes, you have that invulnerable period, yeah. uh, which I'll, I'll talk about later. I, <laughs> I, use, I spam the hell out of that movie. <laughs> but in part one, if you, even if you got hit, you hit the yeah, spikes. Yeah, even go. if you're in invulnerable mode, you still die. After Airman, who, who'd you go after? I went to Flashman after Airman. Start off, I, I started with Airman, went to Flashman, went to Quickman, Metal Man, Bubble Man. Crash Man, Heat Man, and Wood Man. Uh, I went Metal Man, uh, took Metal Man to Bubble Man, uh, skipped Heat Man. Uh, I went to uh, Wood Man, to Air Man, to, uh, Air Man, to Crash Man, to Flash, uh, Heat, and then finally Quick Man. I did Metal Man, Bubble Man, Heat Man, Wood Man, Air Man, Crash Man, Flash Man and then Quick Man. So you beat Heat Man though without the jet? Yes. Wow. No. You actually get that from um, Air Man's level, right? I thought you were so, yeah. Oh, do you? Oh, so okay. then I must have beat Air Man first then. Oh, okay. Because I, I used the jet. There was no way I was going to pass that Volvo. I remember when I was a kid, I did pass that and I was like, I was so thrilled. <laughs> I was so proud after I passed that part. Oh, yeah, but at this time I didn't even try. Yeah, <laughs> what we're talking about is in Heat Man, there's a huge stretch of just pitfall and, and lava. The, and lava. The, and the only way to pass it is to jump across blocks that disappear and reappear. So there's an order in which they appear. So you have to, as soon as one appears and one you're on, pretty much disappears. So you have to make your way mm -hmm. across. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they go all like, they're like skip a beat too. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, so what we did was just use uh, one of the power ups to get a jet and after be airman and you can just sail that all the way across yeah. without even dealing with the block. They put a one up and like right in the middle of it too to like make you think <laughs> that, oh there's, there's a little one up there, that's gonna be easy to get. I just, I just put that one off one up off. I, just, I had seven men at that point. I was like, fuck you one up. <laughs> that's pretty much what I did. <laughs> I actually got, got off and got it. Mm. And then got used my jet to get across. I was scared I was gonna run out. Mm -hmm. I didn't even want to risk it. Yeah. So are, which level? Are, are there any levels you guys want to talk about? You like, gotta talk about Quick Man. Quick Man's a bitch. You, if you if you manage to beat Flash Man prior to beating Quick Man, then it's not too bad as long as you make sure to conserve all the Flash Man uh, abilities. So what Flash Man ability does is basically just freezes the screen. So Mega Man can move, but none of the uh, none of the enemies move or anything like that. And you cannot you you can't kill the enemies either because you can't right. shoot. They right. It's just a, a freeze move. And you can't even stop it. That's the thing I hate. You can't even stop it. Yeah. It, it goes all the way until it's run down, and then and then you can do something else. But with Quick Man's stage, there's a there's a stretch of screens where you're falling from the top, and these little beams fly across the screen, and if any of them just one touch, even just like barely mix you, it will kill you instantly. And it's not like the beams go away. The be the beams either come from the left or right, and it's a, probably an inch thick. And once it goes all the way across the screen, it stays there. It does not go away. So right. you have to beat the beams pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, like as I was saying, uh, if you use if you use the flashman ability, it's not too bad as long as you get through it the first time and you're able to uh, to kill the boss afterwards. Otherwise, you're going to be screwed because you won't have the flashman ability anymore unless you were managed to power it back up. Uh, I was telling these guys earlier that I, I have this thing with Mega Man games where I try to do everything without using the special abilities first, and I, I had to have died probably six or seven times on this level before I actually got through it. That's that's where I use most of my continues, actually. Um, I managed to do it without using the Flashman ability, which didn't sound like these guys even knew that was possible. No. I, I did it. It was a pain in the ass, but I did it. Um, yeah, no way. I've never beaten that level without <laughs> using Flashman's ability. Yeah. That's, just, that's hardcore right there. Thank you. I yeah. try. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Flashman, uh, we talked about Heat Man with, uh, with the pit. Oh, I was just going to mention the Bubble Man level, just because I did die okay. on that one a couple times. Just because once you get underwater, you, you jump, like, basically to the top of the screen mm -hmm. whenever you jump. So you got to be really delicate with uh, pressing the jump button because there's spikes on top, and sometimes there's even spikes on bottom. You have to be super careful about not jumping too high and hitting the spikes. I, and died, that, I died a couple times. That there. stupid fish with that little light bulb yeah, on top of its head that shoots out. <laughs> It shoots out shrimp at you. Yeah. Man, I was like, I I'm not even going to deal with this thing. I, I <laughs> got hit by the shrimp and tried to walk by him. He takes away half your life if you get hit oh, by shit. him. So I was like... <sighs> I just used the metal blade on him just like killed it. Yeah. Yeah, like See, two or three hits. Again, I, I'm such a fool. I, I just shot my regular blaster. I, I didn't bother with that. Yeah, that fish was a dick. There <laughs> were a couple of them, too. Um, yeah, I also remember on Bubble Man's level... The little uh, platforms that actually drop when you jump on them. Mm -hmm. That was another ball tense moment when you oh. had to jump on the platforms and jump right off. That's right at the beginning. Yeah, it is right at the beginning. I died at least two or three times there as well. I, I sound like a bitch compared to Brad now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it, I was just talking to these guys earlier about how I'm not a real fan of when games, you have to know what's coming in order to be able to pass the level. That's an example of it. I'm, I'm jumping on this little platform. I'm thinking, oh, I'm good. And <laughs> all of a sudden, the, the ground drops from under me. I have not, and it's, it's a lot, it's not even a half second that you stay on there before it falls. <laughs> it's, it's really quick. You have to be really quick on your toes in order to, to get from one platform to the other. So the, the eight Robot Masters, they were definitely, I, I believe they were harder than the last six from part one. But this is when... This Wily's Castle, I believe, was a lot tougher than Part 1's Wily's Castle. Uh, there were more levels, uh, there were more tense moments, and uh, yeah, we'll just start with Stage 1. Uh, stage 1, you need to use the uh, Level 3, or the Number 3, or Number 1 ability right off the bat to scale some walls. And then the fear happened. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. Uh, I don't believe Nick knew. No, I didn't know. I didn't, oh, I knew, but I just didn't remember. Brad's hoity-toity ass over there didn't care because he had a perfect controller to play with. Hoity-toity. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was like, okay, hopefully I could get past this thing without the controller sticking. <laughs> so you're jumping along some platforms, and then all of a sudden the screen starts moving, and then my heart starts beating faster. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick's sitting there, he doesn't know what's coming, he's like, oh, the screen, I, can't <laughs> the screen. I gotta keep jumping. And then after a few seconds, the fucking dragon pops up. <laughs> a giant green dragon starts chasing you across the screen, and you have to keep jumping. There's like no ifs, ands, or buts. If he touches you, you're dead. Yep. Instant kill. It's not like you he hits you and you fall into the pit. No, one, he touches you and you explode. He's a giant spike, put it that yeah. way. So... He starts chasing you, and you have to jump very fast. You can't stop and take your time because he'll catch you. You have to nonstop just jump, 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 and you have to jump all the way across until you finally get to the end. Yeah, and that screen goes on forever, it seems like. You have to do, like, 15 jumps. That's when I put the controller down for the first time. After I kept dying in that spot because of my busted controller, I was like, I've got to, I've got to rest. And so I jotted down the password. I uploaded a picture to the Facebook page and said, fuck you, dragon, I'm gone. <laughs> Did you? I don't think I saw the picture. Yeah, I, I uploaded the, the password. So. <laughs> Nick, your thoughts on the dragon? Um, the dragon itself wasn't too difficult. I, I, I had the same experience as you without a, a controller that had sticky buttons. Uh, I did die a couple of times. 
I used the uh, the quick boomerang on him. I got up on the top uh, perch there and shot the boomerangs at him. Didn't take too many shots at him, and he was gone. So not too bad. But yeah, that just leading up to that battle was pretty rough. Yeah, I I I was so excited the, after I came back the next day or the next two days. I think I came back after two days. My first try, I got across in one try, and I was so excited. I was like, I could take this guy on from the bottom platform. Oh, I was all juiced, and I was like, there's nothing that could stop me. I had Rock Wiley's music going through my head, <laughs> and then he shoots fireball at me, and I fell far at I should have been holding the Master Sword. <laughs> yeah, I should have been holding the Master Sword. So uh, after a few more tries, I was able to beat him. I don't know, Brad, he's like, ugh, I just went by him without even having to get hit. He didn't <laughs> kill me at all. <laughs> no, I, I did, I, surprisingly, I didn't die on that guy. I, I, uh, ten years ago when I played through it, I, I died on him quite a bit, but this time I was just in the zone. I didn't have no kids distracting me there in the room playing Xbox. Uh, I, I just tensed up my balls and went at it and beat it. <laughs> Maybe that's what we're missing. Yeah, we need to tense balls. We need to tense up our balls. Maybe it releases like testosterone or something. Yeah. Put like a like a clothespin on your balls. Crunchy works pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking from experience, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. So let's get this right up. So, Mister, I only died three times. Where did you die throughout the whole game? The uh, I only remembered two, and then Logan brought up because he watched me, he was, <laughs> and he reminded me of the third time. Uh, one time I died on the end boss on Dr. Wiley only because I wasn't paying attention to my life bar because apparently the drop the lava takes away almost half of your oh, life. Oh, man. That's yeah. Um, the, uh, the other time I died was on Flashman's level, of course. And then uh, Quickman? Quickman. I always say Flashman because it's like, flash, flash. <laughs> so, and then the other time I died was on the boss gauntlet in Wiley's castle. I wasn't paying attention to my life and Bubble Man got me apparently. <laughs> He died from Bubble Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, stage two. How did you kill the boss of that level with the bricks? With the metal blade. Oh, yeah, metal blade. Okay. As well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, most memorable thing about level two is the boss. Level three, very short. Uh, level three of Wily's Castle. Uh, it just tries to uh, trick you with the little spikes in the water as you're falling. You have to be careful not to hit any spikes. I remember that. And then Gut Dozer. Uh, is the boss of that level. What did you guys use to kill Gut Dozer? I think I just used my blaster on him. I used the quick boomerang. I might have used the boomerang. Yeah, that's what I used. Level 4. Level 4. I don't remember much about the level, I just remember the fucking boss. The boss is a bitch, dude. <laughs> remember one of those things where you have to know that what what to do or else you're not going to be able to do it. Level 4 is where it had the moving platforms and it had the blue guys coming at you, um, coming towards you as you go along this platform with the spikes on the bottom. The room I want to mention is the third room with the platform because this is where I use the invulnerable trick because I had, I didn't want to die. It was like my last man and I had two, two or three energy tanks. So, because once you take him over, you lose all your energy tanks. Right. It's Nick reminding me of that. I didn't <laughs> yeah. <have> to <laughs> yeah. So, I, at my last man, I had three tanks. So, what happens is when I go down the, the stair, I go, I push start to switch to my woodman ability. But what does that do? Make you drop off the ladder. <laughs> I fucking hate that. <laughs> and so I drop off the ladder and get hit by the blue guy. I'm like, oh, I missed the platform. So I'm just sitting there and I keep jumping and getting hit by the blue guy until the platform comes around. <laughs> I stayed on those spikes for like, it must have been a world record, like, like 30 seconds. And then, so I finally get back on the platform and make my way to the uh, to the end. But this still isn't the last one. The last room is pretty easy. You just have to take a platform to a middle brick, and then you could use your level two jet to go finish the <laughs> rest of the way. So I'm like, oh, cool. So I, I pass the room. I'm getting I'm getting to the boss. All of a sudden, this guy comes up. This huge, I don't know. He's in a machine. And he just crushes me. Along with all my hopes and dreams. <laughs> oh, I'm like, you. Yeah, he got me. I didn't know he was coming. So I was like, forget this. I'm just going to do my password. So I jot down the password. And I'm coming back another day. You On your password, you could start back on the level of the Wiley? You don't start at the very beginning? No, you start at the beginning of Wiley's castle. Yeah. I didn't know that. 
<laughs> so when I entered my password, I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, cool, I get to hear the music again, but I will start all the way back here. So then, uh, what did you get for using my password? I guess so. You, you had like two levels of you just should have beat it. <laughs> so I, I come, so I come back later that day. I make my way up to the boss gauntlet. I'm like, cool. No, we got to talk about level four boss. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> so level four boss is only vulnerable. There's it's a security room basically. You're in one room. There's uh, little guns throughout the room. I think there's six maybe. Uh, that are blocked by blast doors, and the only way to get past the blast doors is to use your crash bomb. There's only a certain amount of crash bomb you could use to blast the door, and the guns are only vulnerable against the crash bomb. So you've got to time your shots wisely. Uh, I believe I I didn't count them out. I just tried to open as many doors as possible. I'm sorry, as less doors as possible, and uh, made my way through the the guns and shot the crash bomb, but You've got to actually know what you're doing or know what's coming up in order to be prepared for that battle. And I didn't. I did not know <laughs> that. I figured I had this crash bomb. I know that's what I need to, to open these secure doors. I'm just going to blast them all open, then I'll kill these things. I didn't put two and two together that the, the enemy was only vulnerable to that weapon as well. So what, what added insult to injury, so one, once you... You know, you run out of your crash bomb, and there's like two of those little enemy things left. They're, they're invulnerable, or excuse me, they, there's nothing that can destroy them other than the crash bomb. So you're just stuck there. You basically just have to wait for those things to shoot you. <laughs> and they only shoot like every 10 seconds or so. So you're just sitting there in the corner waiting for that boss to kill you. It sucks so hard, dude. <laughs> and then once you do that, you have to like kind of go back through the level because there's, no, there's not really too many enemies after that. You kind of have to go backwards and fill, fill your uh, crash bomb back up unless you just want to start over and use a continue but I try not to do that if possible so it's just it's just a bitch once, I mean once I knew that I, it was easy but it's one of those things you you know you have to know what's coming in order to be able to beat it and I remember that running out of the crash bomb weapon and you know you, you're sitting there with uh, your life's looking pretty you got full health and there's nowhere out of the room you have to have those things kill you and they take forever yep. to kill you it's such a bitch <laughs> <laughs> So next was the boss gauntlet. Uh, Basically, the boss gauntlet is you have to fight all the bosses over again in a row. Yeah. And this one, uh, did did you uh, use your, use the special ability? I did. Uh, I did. Just because I knew I had to fight all eight of them at once. Yeah. So um, boss gauntlet, pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, metal bla metal man is weak against metal blade. <laughs> yeah. Attack a tight. Like, oh, two hits, you're dead. <laughs> And then Dr. Wiley. Dr. Wiley gave me such a hard time. Uh, I managed... Uh, no, this is what happened. I died a few times on Dr. Wiley. I was like, let me try this boss gauntlet again. Tried it, beat it, then got to Dr. Wiley again, died. Like, you know what? I'm more. I'm pretty sure not, the password changed, so I'm going <laughs> to take, take another picture of the password oh, on my no. phone and just come back to it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> got the... I woke up this morning, turned on the game, input the password, and I got to hear that Dr. Wiley's face on the I had to beat Dr. Wiley, um, slow down, because I just kept trying to jump and attack him, and I had to figure out his pattern. Yeah. And I was able to, what I did, finally I was like, me and this guy's weak against Heat Man. So the first stage, his first form, I was able to keep kill him by hitting him twice with Heat Man. Uh, so I charged up Heat Man, uh, shot him twice, and was able to kill him. And then I used uh, Crash Bombs against his uh, second form. Is that what you did? I think I, I used a lot of Boomerang and um, just the regular yeah, I used the Boomerang on, the, on his first form. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the Metal Blade, I think. Mm -hmm. Or Crash Bombs. And then... And then so you beat Dr. Wily, you think that's it, but no, there's a secret passage to the castle. At least when you die, you start here instead of back to the boss gauntlet. Right. But you have to make your way through a little stretch of uh, path with drops of what blood is it? I think it's lava. Oh. So it's in a cave. Well, it doesn't make sense to be, uh, to be blood. So drops of blood lava <laughs> <laughs> is falling down and you have to you know, make your way through it, avoiding the lava. I've seen this part of the game so much and 
from the, this morning. It took me like an hour to beat the third form of Wily. That I figured once you drop down into the cavern and you hold right, you could pass the lava without even having to avoid it. It dro all drops behind you. Huh. So, um, first impressions of alien form Dr. Wily. You, ever, you guys ever get hit by him? Yeah, I, I got hit by Yeah. By his body? Not by no, him, just by him. He takes like three fourths of your life if you touch him. Oh shit! Wow. Yeah, I found that out the hard way. <laughs> but uh, I just had to get his pattern down. Um, nothing much. Not much. So you get his pattern down, avoid him at all costs. I got another two hit points left, and I was so excited. I jumped. And I was like, yeah! And I jump and throw my last bubble, and then he hits me. Oh, no. uh, so I died, and I, I, I like grabbed the controller and I shook it. <laughs> <laughs> I shook it and I tensed. I was like, Ugh! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Ugh! and then so a few after a few more times, I was able to beat him. Yeah, bubble lead, only way to beat him. Yep, I wouldn't have remembered that. You guys made it a, one of the questions a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and that helped me out. I would have tried every weapon on it mm -hmm. before bubble lead because I mean, who uses bubble lead? Exactly. <laughs> so Mega Man Two, good game. One of the greatest out there. So we forgot about talk about uh, tales of treasure hunting. Oh yeah, that's right. Do you have any treasure hunting to report on? I did have a, a treasure hunting which I left at home. Oh okay. Uh, I forgot. It's not really a. It's more of a gag thing, <laughs> which I'll bring on the next podcast. But uh, went to Dimple. Went to count with Goodwills throughout the week. Even went to Deseret Industries. Oh, the Mormon place. Is that Mormon place? My grandma loves to go there, dude. My my my, my father's side of the family is all Mormon. My grandma Jones, my my uh, my father's mother, obviously. Lima Jones. Yeah, she uh, she frequents that place. Wait, like, what? Maybe multiple times a day. <laughs> what, remember the uh, the B yeah. place? Yeah. There's one on Watt Avenue. Oh, okay. Uh, not on Watt. If you get off, if you're heading down Business City, get off on Watt mm. South. You'll you'll run into it. Yeah, uh -huh. you'll see, like, there's a sign on the outside that says something like LDS Employment, or LDS is Latter-day Saint. Oh, yeah. like, that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I went there the other day, and they had a Cabbage Patch doll still in the box. I was going to pick it up, but I didn't know if it was worth anything, so um, I, I went everywhere, and I couldn't find anything, so I just went to Dimple and got a gag gift, and I was like, I'll just bring this on, but of course I forgot it. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm calling bullshit on a story you told me last week. Oh, fuck. Which one? Uh, I go to the Goodwill. <laughs> and uh, prior to this, Naja had told me she saw this necklace she thought was pretty. So I was like, I'm going to get her this necklace. Six ninety nine price tag. I'm like, why not? I say, can I get this necklace? She's like, sure. I'm like, we would take $5 for it. And she looks at me like I lost my mind. Probably <laughs> <laughs> because nothing was wrong with it. There's got to be something wrong with it. So I'm like, you don't haggle here? <laughs> <laughs> and she says, no. I'm like, my brother told me that you haggle. You guys negotiate. <laughs> and she's like, maybe at like the Salvation Army when furniture's been sitting out for a few years. I've seen haggling done. Maybe you need to know the people who work there. Or maybe go to the haggling Goodwills. <laughs> but yeah but I know that if there's something wrong with a shirt and you point it out they'll mark it down so if it's a perfectly fine necklace they're probably not going to mark it down yeah so the other place I went to what you know the Toys R Us off Florian Hart closed down yes have you been there since then no they opened up a thrift store there oh really huge wow it's called Echo something and it's a Toys R Us filled with awesomeness oh that's a big thrift shop yeah uh, I did see some gray gold there. Did you? What, Super Nintendo or Nintendo? Nintendo. Oh, okay. NFL. What? That's just the game. It's called game called NFL. Oh, really? Carried a $20 price tag. Whoa. What? <laughs> did, I, you, did you look it up? Yeah. How much does it worth? 248 Oh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm looking, sitting there looking at this NFL game for nineteen ninety nine. Then right next door they have SmackDown 2 for PlayStation for 5 bucks. Like... Who makes up these prices? So then I walk all the way to the other side of the store, and they have a bunch of VHSs, and I hear this old couple kind of bickering. Not old. They're probably like in their mid-40s. Uh, the guy says, well, how much is that thing, Miss Nasty? And I, and I was like, is, is Janet Jackson around? <laughs> it wasn't Janet Jackson. 
it was uh, an, uh, an older white lady that was far less attractive. The complete opposite of me. Nasty. Exactly. And she was holding a Sex in the City VHS collection season two. <laughs> Must have weighed like five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then so she's like, look, it's, you know, I can't remember the price. And then he's like, well, get it then. Nasty. And then so they're walking away. He's like, no, 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 that's season two. Get season one. And so you're like, oh, he wants to watch it too. Mr. Nasty. <laughs> Mr. <Mixed> Nasty. <laughs> okay, now we've reached a point in our show where we're going to go ahead and go over the top five list. We each have a top five honorable mentions. We'll mention after. Um, top five list this week. Top five boss battles. Uh, doesn't have to be final boss battles. Could be any boss battle of your choice. Uh, just anything that's uh, memorable that you want to talk about. Uh, who wants to start this one off? We'll start. I went with, for my, my fifth one, I went with M. Bison from Street Fighter nice. 2. I hope I didn't pick anyone top five. But, uh, yeah, uh, Street Fighter 2, super cool game from probably junior high school type years. I don't, I didn't write, write down the years. 90, I think 1991. That's what I'm thinking as well. I was a Ken guy. I, I always used Ken. And, uh, Ken. I'm a Ken guy as well. This is a, Brandon's a Ryu guy. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> uh, Street Fighter 2, the original, uh, you weren't allowed to use the, the last four bosses. It was Balrog, Vega, Saget, and M. Bison. Uh, the first three, Balrog, Vega, and Saget, pretty easy to get through, but M. Bison was a beast, man. I wrote down a few of his uh, moves that were trouble for me as, uh, fighting as Ken. He would do this move where well, he still does the move. We play, we play Street Fighter all the time. It's called like a psycho torpedo or psycho crusher. Psycho crusher. So he he hurls himself through the air, spins, has some bolt of energy around him, and he'll go directly through you. Let that'll that'll fuck you up for sure. <laughs> he also does this move where he like does a front flip, and he like as he's landing, he like kicks you in the face, and then he like with his second leg, he'll like hit you in the stomach. And the the thing that's killer about that, it's not like most fighters where they just jump up in the air and they do a drop kick or a jump kick or whatever. He he like flies across the screen and does it. And he'll he'll jump over Hadoukens and projectiles of any sort. That's a that's a beast of a move too. He also does kind of a move like Chun Li where he'll jump on top of your head. He'll jump on your head, but unlike Chun Li, as he's falling, he'll like reach his hand out and like smack you across the top <laughs> of the head. That's a beast too. I mean, he, he had all all sorts of uh, cool moves. He even had like a a Dalsum type warp thing, I think, as well. Uh, so that was my number five. You guys, have any thoughts on that? I just remember him being played by the late great Raul Julia, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gomez from the Adam Show, in his last role as M Bison in the Street Fighter Two movie. Yeah, yeah, it, and it sucked that. Not only with Bison, because all of Bison's moves are charge moves. You have to hold back or down for two seconds. Mm -hmm. He just r lets them loose without even having a charge. Oh, yeah, yeah, for and sure. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not very good with the Street Fighter guys where you have to charge the moves like the, the Blancas and the Guiles and E Honda. I'm not very good with those guys. But, yeah, you're right. When you're playing against the computer, those rules do not apply to the computer for sure. <laughs> he was a beast. Dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brandon. Uh, number my number five uh, is got to be the Hydra from God of War, and I only chose the Hydra because of my pronunciation of Hydra. <laughs> That's the first thing I was going to point out. I was like, I think it's Hydra. <laughs> and I remember uh, talking uh, over at Joe Cover Ruby's house about some other game, and I said, "You got to get past the Hydra." And then he looks at me and he's like, "You mean the Hydra?" <laughs> Like, no, I said Hydra, motherfucker. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? And he's like, you don't say fire hydrant, do you? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <Like a> joke. <laughs> no, but I'm going to. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, you say fire hydrant. I, but, you know, the, the nine-headed beast of, t of lore from uh, the Greek mythology, the Hydra. <laughs> and, and so we went back and forth on that for a few, for a few minutes. But... The Hydra from God of War, the first um, boss battle you fight in, in the whole entire series, and I just remember it being huge and epic, uh, you know, smashing its head against the many posts of the ship. It's just, all the bosses in God of War are huge and just completely awesome to fight it. They're always fun. 
but the Hijra was the funnest for me. My number five <laughs> is going to be uh, Psycho Mantis from mm -hmm. Metal Gear Solid. I almost put him. Uh, such an awesome game and such a very different way to beat him. Psycho Mantis, uh, Metal Gear Solid is a tactical espionage game where you have to sneak past enemies on your missions. Uh, you raid a huge base. But uh, Psycho Mantis is one of the bosses where uh, he comes at you, he talks to you for a little bit, he'll say, oh, I see you've been playing Sweet Coden and Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Very interesting. And you're like, how does he know I have these games? Yeah. When all this time he was actually reading your memory card and he would actually, if they were Konami games, <laughs> he would list them off and tell you what you've been playing. So that was a trip, and every time you went to go attack him once the battle started, he would move. There was no way you could hit him with anything. The only way you could beat him is by plugging your controller one port into controller two, and then he lost his psychic abilities and you're able to beat him. So I did not even know how to beat him. I actually read it in a magazine, a Nintendo book, uh, and I, I, that's how oh, I put him there because so innovative. Any of those bosses were a joy to fight. I thought the colonel tells you, like when you're talking, he might in the radio. He's like, switch controller port snake or something like that. If you get real bad, probably. I, I think he says that. What I didn't play that game. <laughs> so he's telling, there's a character in the game telling you, the player, to switch controller ports. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> throughout the throughout the. Uh, you have a codec. Uh, um, an earpiece where you could call different people uh -huh. and the colonel actually calls you as you're fighting him and <laughs> he gives you tips about the game and he'll just okay. straight up be like use the controller port too <laughs> wow. and, and Hideo Kojima the one who makes the games kind of puts that fourth dimension in there where sometimes they'll talk to the player uh -huh. instead of the actual snake guy so it's it's pretty cool um, yeah, I played the I think there were two released on uh, Nintendo I played those two, but I never played any of them on the PlayStation. Great games. <coughs> I guess I'll go to number four. I feel really bad putting this one as number four because it's one of my favorite bad guys of all time, Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very feel, bad guy. Feel feel really bad putting him at number four. I just I I'm trying to be a little different, I guess. Um, Final Fantasy VII, obviously one of the greatest games ever made, one of the greatest stories ever told in any sort of video game. Uh, the uh, the relationship between Sephiroth and the protagonist Cloud is great. Sephiroth is just constantly fucking with him, trying to you know shape what what Cloud's reality is. It takes forever for Cloud to realize you know what he is, who he is, where he came from, and and Sephiroth is just constantly fucking with him. So the final showdown with Sephiroth, uh, the one winged angel, of course, there's the awesome music that goes with it. Uh, written by the great Nobuo Uematsu. Uh, Brandon and I went to Los Angeles was a couple years ago now mm -hmm. uh, to go see the uh, the Distant Worlds. They performed that in, a, in an orchestra setting. It was really amazing. So the music is awesome. Um, the visual effects are awesome. The, the, the um, Sephiroth floating above him with his one wing just the, the, the battle itself is cool, but the, the build-up to it is what really sells it for me. Um, do you guys have anything to add about that? Uh, I just remember uh, finally getting getting to him and uh, using Omni Flash nice. and like killing him and like just with that move. And I'm like, well, I guess that was pretty easy. Right. That's what I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but the, the battle itself is not yeah, much yeah. what what sells it for me. It's just everything leading up to it. Yeah. And of course, if you play Final Fantasy games, if you level up too much, yeah. sometimes <laughs> that happens. Or, <laughs> or or get super moves that you're not really supposed to get. <laughs> right. right. I, in fact, I don't think I ever got on this list. That's the one you get at the gold sauce mm -hmm. or whatever. But you are, you actually obtain it in the last battle. Like the one we get angel part is one part. Then there's another part where you two are just standing there. And you just have to finish them off. You could you you. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <coughs> uh, I remember getting up to se the last part of Final Fantasy VII, and I don't know if it was just fear of beating the game, but Brandon and I would always start all over. Yeah, uh, play through the game all over again because we didn't want the game to end. Mm -hmm. So we just started all the way back over to the beginning. 
Yeah, and some of that time it was involuntary. I believe Matt saved over a game one time, or <laughs> no, he did. I, that pissed me off. <laughs> or, or did was I saving the game for him? And out of habit, I went to our save file. I think that's what might have happened. That's why I, I always use save file three now because <laughs> I let my kids use one and two because they'll always save over my shit. <laughs> My cousin Zach would do the same shit to me. This is this is I I didn't get PlayStation until later on, on in life. I was always a Nintendo guy, but this was before like you even had like you know memory discs or anything like that. So he, you know, with the old Nintendo, you'd have to press power and reset simultaneously in order to save any progress. And he was he would delete my shit all the time. <laughs> It pissed me off so much. Yeah, Zachary McBee, my cousin. <laughs> shout out. Shout out yeah, to Zachary McBee. Yeah, yeah. BZ. Yeah, I'm sure he's listening. <laughs> of course. He's our friend on Podomatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Join us on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Stop saving all my shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, my number four, uh, I guess it's pretty much like Nick's number four, where the buildup is way greater than the boss battle. Uh, I'm going to put the Ancient Jelly. From Lufia 2. Oh, yes. Uh, in order to get to the Ancient Jelly, you must progress in something called the Ancient Cave. It's a completely optional side quest in Lufia 2 where it's a uh, 100 floors full of monsters. Randomized uh, dungeon every time you enter it. Uh, you don't know what you're going to get. When, and you start out at level 1 every time you go in the dungeon. Not only are you start out at level 1, you don't have any equipment. Because there's red treasure chests which as soon as you open them, you get the item, you get equipped it, it's a random item, it could be super powerful, it could be super weak, and once you leave the dungeon, you lose that item. But if you find an item in a blue treasure chest, it's always going to be super strong, and you could bring it back with you on uh, different trips. So there was countless trips in the, in the ancient dungeon to even get to the 100th floor. We had to probably, we spent probably, what, months on that. We Every summer vacation, we would have our capes, be naked underneath, <laughs> be playing that game just for the ancient cave. And we would just mull through that cave over and over and over again. And once we saw a blue treasure chest, we go, ooh, blue treasure chest. get heck excited. And, and we would save that treasure chest. We would open that one last because we knew that it was going to be a great item. And then some rooms, it would just, some floors would be just one room with like three blue treasure chests, but like 50 enemies. So we'd kill all the enemies first and save the blue treasure chest for last. So the ancient jelly... Kind of sorry, kind of wimpy. Uh, he's on the hundredth floor. Uh, you just walk up to him, fight him. He's not hard at all, and then you beat the ancient dungeon. It's the hundredth basement because yeah. you keep going down. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's pretty much it with that. Just the ancient dungeon alone is worth a, a boss battle nomination on my, on my part. My number four is going to have to be from Castlevania Symphony of the Night, nice. and it's got kind of two reasons I picked this. The Bosses Beelzebub, the Lord of the Flies, also because of the tenacious D and the picky destiny of the boss. <laughs> uh, such a tight ending, such a tight uh, movie. Uh, the whole movie leading up to that is just, you know, it, it's got its funny moments, but that last part of the movie is very epic. So I'd love. Yeah, Beelzebub. Only if you got a bottle of rocket sauce to fight Beelzebub, that'd be great in Castlevania, but you don't. Beelzebub is a giant decaying corpse. He takes up the whole screen. He's probably ten times your your size. He doesn't attack you. He has these giant flies that attack you. And I remember Brandon and I getting to this boss. It, it was the, one of the first bosses we encountered in the Upside Down Castle. Uh, if you beat the game a special way, you got to play through the whole game over again, but upside down. So the ceiling was the bottom, the bottom was the ceiling. It was so tight. So fighting uh, the Azel Bub, you, you go into the room and all of a sudden you hear it buzzing and it's flies. And you see this rotting corpse and you just have to hack at it. These flies, the first time we fought them, took away like 300, 400 lives on us and just killed us instantly. We didn't know what the hell was going on. So we, pat we, we skipped past that boss. Luckily we had a memory card to save it. Mike Bunton. So shout out to Mike. Because <laughs> that boss killed us over and over and over again. And finally what we ended up doing was putting on uh, protection against dark. So uh, we, you could actually also turn into a poisonous gas and kill him that way too. But just le they had so many good bosses on that game. I just had to pick that one because of the beautiful boss, beautiful boss on uh, Tenacious D. <laughs> Alright, uh, my number three is not really a boss at all. It's, there's no physical form to this boss. I just love the game so much, I wanted to put it on here. 
It's through the fire and flames on Guitar Hero 2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those of you know, who know Dragon Force, possibly the fastest band in the world right now. They, they play insanely fast, to- totally fun music. Um, Faster than Fight for Fighting? <laughs> definitely faster than Fight for Fighting. <laughs> better than Madden. Oh, way better than Madden. Um, they say that if you can even just get through this song on an on expert level, you're a god. Some people have gotten five stars on it. I have never gotten to that feat. I've never, I've never done that before. I don't. I think I might have gotten through it once on expert, by just by you know, by the skin of my teeth, just doing the bare minimum, just trying to pick up notes here and there. Uh, you gotta, you gotta be like the whole time on the freaking fretboard, the whole time uh, stroking. Don't be a pervert. <laughs> uh, doing up strokes and down strokes on uh, on the guitar. Um, I did a little bit of research into this just to give you an idea. They say that it's most of the song requires that you go. You're going 26 notes per second. It's it's crazy <laughs> fast. Uh, not only that, but it, you have to. If you know guitar here, you know there's five little uh, buttons on the fretboard that you have to press down. Th- they're going from like the top one to the bottom one to the middle one to the bottom one. Not just you know one two three four five. It's one five one four one three one two two five two. It's just fucking insane. And it's a great song. Uh, it's also eight minutes long. Yeah. I, sh- I, th- I should add that part in there. Um, a lot of people use the, the tapping style, so like they'll, they'll s- strum it, and then they'll use their right hand to help them get all the frets. Some people even play it like piano style, so they'll lay the guitar down flat and, and just uh, play it as if it was a piano to get through everything. I, I don't really like doing that kind of stuff. I mean, you're supposed to be emulating playing guitar, so I, I do try to play it as much as I can. But tough, tough, tough song to get through. Great song, by the way, and uh, just gave me a lot of problems. I thought I'd give it a little shout out on here, even though it doesn't have a physical form. It's just a great song. Uh, my number three is going to be Blind from Final Fantasy or uh, Legend of Zelda: a Link to the Past, mm-hmm. uh, just because. You don't you don't know it you don't expect it you don't know what's coming and just the pure puzzle of solving solving the puzzle to even fight the boss uh, link to the past once you get to the dark world you have to rescue seven maidens uh, who are trapped in crystals and the fourth maiden is actually uh, sitting outside of her crystal she's the fourth dungeon is located in Kokiri Village where it would be in the light world, but it's a dark world, Kokiri Village, so you enter uh, the dungeon, and you're going throughout, uh, looking for the maiden, all of a sudden you see her, and you're like, oh, hey, it's a maiden, she's like, take me outside, so you're all right, so, oh, cool, I saved a maiden, so, <laughs> so, uh, even when you try to leave, she says something like, she, she won't go with you, so you're like, what the heck, so what you find out is you have to actually place a bomb uh, or you throw a bomb to a crack in the floor, uh, it opens up, and then you go down into the basement, and there's sunshine shining through, and you take her in that room, and then she transforms into the boss, which is blind. So you're like, oh, man, and this guy was tough. Uh, I remember Brad and I, had we had to go get our tempered sword first. <laughs> uh, we had to have some uh, potions because he was so powerful. But just the whole process of even getting the boss is why I put him on number three. Yeah, that's a cool story. So my number three is going to be actually Jubileus from Bayonetta. Only because the the final boss battle is, if you guys haven't played, I know you guys haven't played Bayonetta, Brandon still hasn't played it all the way through, I don't know why, it's such a great game. Mm-hmm. Uh, each boss you fight is huge in its own right, but when you fight Jubileus, the final boss, it actually throws galaxies at you, kill you in one hit. Uh, you're fighting it in space, and I don't want to ruin it for you, but actually finishing that boss off is... You do it in such a cool way. Uh, you're going to have to play the game now so we could talk about it uh, on the next podcast, but it's such a great game of uh, fighting the final boss. I'll try to beat the game by the next podcast. Okay. Uh, but... Not too much to say about that, except that once you, the way you beat it, it's very awesome. Is that PS3? Yep. Oh, I can't play that. Too hoity-toity for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, my number two uh, probably should be number one, but I'm just going to put it at number two because I, I wanted to have something special for number one. Is uh, Ganon or Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time? Yes. You could have went with any sort of any form of Ganon, really. But I went with the one on Ocarina of Time. I particularly like this version of Ganondorf for Ganon because Ganondorf, he's kind of cocky in this game. He he had a little bit of attitude to him. He said like snark. He would make snarky remarks all the time. Well, look, he was around a bunch of women during his childhood. That's very true. He was <laughs> the Gerudo. The Gerudo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I like this form of Ganondorf. He 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 had a little bit of character to him. And even when the when the opening battle scene starts with the Ganondorf, he, he's there's Princess Zelda floating o above traps, and Ganondorf is sitting at a huge pipe organ playing some sort of eerie tune. It kind of sets the scene for a dramatic ending. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't remember per, you know verbatim exactly what he said, but I'm sure he said something some smart ass thing about how you guys are fucking pathetic. I'm gonna <laughs> destroy you. I'm gonna destroy the world with it. So yeah, you, you go through the battle with him. You start off by you know hitting the energy balls back and forth. So it's basically like a game of catch. Whoever drops the ball first is gonna lose. And if, you, if you're able to to do that, and you know strike him enough times after you've hit him with it. Uh, what he'll do is he'll tear the whole tower down. He'll tear his do tower down in hopes that he's still going to, to slay both Link and Zelda. Of course, they make it out. And they think they're safe. Oh, fuck. No, <laughs> they're <not safe. laughs> Here comes Ganon. Oh, fuck, yes. Quick tidbit about Ganon. That's actually the name I used to use for my junk. Nice. <laughs> uh, Ganon. Didn't you have a cat named Ganon also? A black cat, yes. So your pussy and your junk was named. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll be more. <laughs> so Ganondorf uses the uh, the Triforce of Power to to become the, the pig beast Ganon. And uh, there's a the first thing that Ganon does in this form is he knocks away the Master Sword and you're like, oh, fuck no. You're thinking, oh, I'm fucked now. But you know, you figure out a way. If you if you did the right things, you'll have the the big Goron sword, and you can uh, you take take him down enough. Eventually, you'll get the uh, the Master Sword back. Even though fucking Zelda's just sitting there next to the Master Sword <laughs> the whole fight, he doesn't do fucking one thing. Finally, if you get if you hurt uh, Ganon enough, that the, the, there's like a barrier of flames around him, and you can go grab the Master Sword. And she doesn't even lift a finger. She actually just says, oh, come get the sword. <laughs> come. Grab it for me. I'm battling this beast, dude. She's sitting there like Alexis, like, uh. good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing about that, that battle scene, the ambiance to it is awesome. Like, there's no sun, there's no light. The only thing that you can, that's really lighting the whole scene is lightning that's going on throughout the, the entire scene. It's, it's a cool, cool ending to a great game. Yeah. Remember he stabs him in the face too at the end. Yeah. He just him in the face. That's cool too, yeah. And the one thing that I really liked about that battle is it brought you all the way back to the beginning of the game. Because I remember when I first played that game on Link's Treehouse, you see a picture of a little figure fighting this huge, like, Tyrannosaur beast. And you're like, oh, that, why is that on there? And then Ooh. as soon as you see Ganon, you're like, that's from the beginning of the game. Nice. You have, like, that aha moment. Uh huh. Uh, my number two is going to be from Final Fantasy 2 or 4. Um, it's got to be the Demon Wall. Oh, nice. Uh, this is where it separates the men from the boys. <laughs> if you're playing on active fighting mode instead of weight fighting mode. Oh, we get it. Yeah, there's two <laughs> fighting modes. Uh, there's active time and wait time. So uh, in order to attack, you have to wait for your active meter to fill, out, fill up. And once that, once a character's meter fills up, you could do a command like attack, use magic or item. But if you have it on wait time, when while you're selecting your attack, the enemy is frozen. They won't attack you. They'll wait until you your, made your selection. Yeah, until your command is entered, then they'll uh, continue to attack. But with active, you have to be quick on your feet. You have to uh, know what you want to do. Like you see Kane's meter fill up, you know you want to do jump, or you want know you want to. Uh, attack, or if you see Rosa, you look at your life saying, oh, she needs to heal, or, you know, Rydia, she's going to be using cool. a call to bring Titan out, or bring, or, you know, have Cecil use some, you know, attack, or whatever he does, cover, where he defends people. <laughs> but that demon wall? Have Ed's or Herod's, 
Yeah, the Edge could throw the heroin spoon, the silver spoon. <laughs> but that the demon, the demon wall, he inches closer to you uh, after every few seconds. I actually looked this up, and you could actually slow on him to slow him down so he won't advance as fast. Hmm. I never knew that. So if you were on a pretty low level, he would advance, and then right when he got against you guys, he would just use Crush and just start killing off your party members. Uh, so he'll use like Crush on Edge, boom, he's dead. And then, uh, heaven forbid, he uses Crush on your only heal or Rosa, and you don't have anyone to bring back to life. So I guess you have Phoenix Downs, but when he starts crushing people, you either start panicking or you play it cool and try to bring them down. Nut up and shut up. Yeah, you nut up and shut up. But yeah, the demon wall was was very cool. My number two is going to be Mother Brain from Super Metroid. Nice. Uh, very great game. One of the best Metroid games out there. Uh, the whole climax to the battle, you, you get into, you fight the Mother Brain. So, uh, Me Super Metroid is not a remake of Metroid, right? No. Okay. You actually come back because you get the little Metroid from Metroid 2, mm -hmm. which grows into the big okay. Metroid and Super Metroid. You go back to Planet Zebus. And do you, does it say why the Metroid grows so big? Just because they're beings of great power. It oh. ate a lot of food. So basically, you get to the final level. You uh, are chasing down the on the last remaining Metroid because you, you need to contain it and uh, get rid of it before it breeds more. A Metroid is a being that sticks onto any living organism and sucks its energy until it shrivels up and dies, until it helps shrivels up and dies. So it's a gigantic parasite. No way to kill it. It's vulnerable against ice and missiles. is basically the only way you can kill it in Metroid. So you're playing through the level. All these enemies are turned to dust. There's no enemies left on the final level. You just move through and they fall to dust. You move through the level and finally get to the mother brain. Uh, you kill her, supposedly. You uh, The lava drops. You go and go to leave the level. But all of a sudden, the mother brain starts glowing again. And it turns in, she turns into a huge Tyrannosaurus beast. Looks like a Tyrannosaurus, but a big mother brain Tyrannosaurus dinosaur that starts hitting the shit out of you. You start killing it. Uh, finally, Mother Brain says, I've had enough. Here's a uh, beam, a new beam that I've got. I'm going to use it on Samus to kill you. She shoots the beam at you, drains your life. Uh, she hits you until you have about 30 lives left. Finally, at the finishing blue comes. She's going to kill you. All of a sudden, this huge giant Metroid who looks to Samus as a mother comes and grasps onto the Mother Brains, getting all the energy from that power, getting all of the, uh, the hyper beam that Mother Brain uses on you and absorbing everything out of it. Mother Brain finally starts shriveling up. She sits down, dies. The Metroid actually come, and it looks like it's going to attack you and kill you, but knowing Samus actually goes back and gives Samus all of her power back. And all of a sudden, as the, you're getting your power back, Mother Brain starts coming back to life. Mother Brain will come up to you and just start wailing on the Metroid, just start killing it. And you're like, no, Metroid, go away, go away. You're going you're gonna to get hurt. All of a sudden... Mother Brain just kills the Metroid. The, the Metroid uh, gets off of Samus to go get some more energy from Mother Brain because it's pretty much dead. But Mother Brain just shoots it down as the remaining carcass goes onto Samus and Samus just powers up fully, gets the Hyper Beam and just shoots the shit out of Mother Brain. It's one of the best boss battles that I actually went through. And it's, uh, you know, it's very emotional for me when, when I was a child and it was such a great game. Mm -hmm. yeah, my, that, that, yeah, that boss battle was great. So that was my number two. Uh, my number one kind of harkens back to uh, our greatest sports games of all time. My number one was Mike Tyson's punch out. Oh. My number one villain, boss battle was Mike Tyson. Oh. Uh, you know, at the time that this game came out, Mike Tyson was considered the baddest man on the planet. Again, I mentioned it last week. You're fighting with Little Mac, this scrawny little white boy. It doesn't look like he can do much of anything. He's going up against the uh, Titan and Mike Tyson. So you're this scrawny little white guy named Little Mac fighting against these behemoth fighters. Um, another example where, you know, the build-up kind of helps to, uh, to to get to the climax, just makes the climax that much better. Uh, the last few guys you fight are Soda Popinski, Mr. Sandman, and Super Macho Man. All great fights. Um, tough guys to knock down. You gotta, you gotta know their, their little gimmicks in order to get by them. But then when Tyson comes, you're not playing around mm -hmm. anymore. It's yeah, it, playtime is over. So if you know anything about Tyson, 
the first 90 seconds, you just got to survive. There's, the, don't even think about trying to hit him. It's not going to happen. He, Tyson throws these haymaker uppercuts. If, if he lands one of them, you're done. Just don't, just, you know, put in the, the code again, <laughs> the 007565. I don't remember the other digits right now, but it, you're, you're done. Just just don't even try. So if you if you manage to make it through those first 90 seconds, Tyson kind of backs off a little bit. He starts throwing these little combos. And if you know Mike Tyson uh, punch out, you know that you know you got to dodge the you got to dodge the punch and then you counter. That's the only way that little Mac is ever going to mount any sort of uh, formidable attack on someone is if he's counter attacking. So with with this particular fight, usually if you're counter attacking, you can land you know three or four little punches. For the first minute or so after you survive that at 90 seconds, you can only land one punch on Mike Tyson. Like he'll he'll knock him in the face. And he'll come right back at you. Don't even try to throw another punch. You're not going to do it. So it takes quite a long time to, to beat him. If, if you can get past him, it's the best feeling in the world, especially as a little kid fighting against Mike Tyson, the baddest man on the, on the planet. It, it was a great feeling when I finally got by him, but uh, that's my number one. I would like to see Mike Tyson take on Glass Joe. <laughs> Glass Joe can take him, I'm sure. I think he's 99 and 1. If I remember oh. correctly, that one. <laughs> so let's say in boxing, you guys got a puncher's chance. Uh, so my number one has got to be Zophar from Lunar 2. So uh, Lunar 2, we've talked about it. Uh, that's where Brad fell in love for the first time with a video game character. <laughs> the only time. Not the only time. The only time. Oh, so she's your one. She's your first love. One and only. So Zophar is this ultimate being that's just going to destroy uh, Earth and the Blue Moon. Uh, he captures uh, Lucia and just having to get all the help from the dragons, the red, the black, the white, and the blue dragon to even manage to even think about taking on Zophar. Uh, does Hero become a Dragon Master? I don't think so. He's not a Dragon Master, huh? Yeah, so he's not a traditional Dragon Master like Alex was in Lunar 1. Um, but uh, just a lot of emotion tied to that battle, uh, trying to save uh, Lucia and the world and the moon. Uh, multiple parts to the battle. It was just amazing. Yeah. My number one is going to be one of the best bosses I actually fought of all time. And it's a recent boss, too. It's going to be uh, Skullmageddon from Double Dragon. Oh, <laughs> Skullmageddon! That's such an awesome boss battle. Uh, you finally... Uh, Double Dragon Neon is a, an homage to all the Double Dragon games. It's a remake uh, made in uh, high definition. And you play through the game. Of course, Marion gets captured again and uh, gets punched in the stomach, thrown over Will William's shoulder. And uh, Skullmageddon is actually the head of the uh, Shadow League. I don't think they're called the Shadow League in this one. I don't know what they're called, but Skullmageddon is kind of like a Shredder, Skeletor mix. He's a big, strong, powerful guy, skeleton guy, but very quirky, very comical. Don't know what he's doing half the time. Um, actually very strong in the game, but get to the final showdown. To actually fight him, he goes to the Negaverse, the Nega Space, and you have to follow him. And uh, Marion uses her love, power of love, to transform you into robots. So you're Billy and Jimmy robots going at the final boss. Super power guys. Still a hard battle. Uh, you get to him. He, you know, he says you killed countless Williamses, which I think is one of the best lines in the <laughs> whole game. Uh, because, you know, there are a lot of Williams characters and you kill them all. And once you kill him and blast him into the void, he just has the greatest end song ever. We'll try to put it up on, on the site. Uh, I probably listened to it about 25 times because I've beat that game so many times. <laughs> and Logan actually um, sings along to that song too. And uh, during the song, he'll say, the first time you beat the game, he'll say, here's a medal for your victory. He sings it out. And you actually get the trophy. So that was so tight that it appears at that, 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 that moment. And um, at the end, he says, you know, I'll be back. And then he falls onto Marion's fist and she punches him right in the nuts. <laughs> so hilarious. <laughs> uh, one of the best uh, characters ever. One of the boss characters ever. Very uh, charismatic. Yeah. So, Arnold Vince, does anyone have any honorable mentions? Did we Did we really have a top five and not one of us overlapped, or did you guys edit? 
What? I don't think we overlapped. No one, no one overlapped at all? That's pretty crazy yeah. to me. Wow. I had a few honorable mentions. Um, Got to mention Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. The uh, Kefka. Yep, yep, yep. And of course, Zerom is from Final Fantasy IV. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also really like the Magus sisters from Final Fantasy IV. Yeah. Uh, their Fuck Delta this. attack. Uh, <laughs> anytime that a boss can heal itself, I, yeah. I always hate them. And they, these three, they worked in, they work together very well. Of course, they're sisters, but uh, not only would they heal each other, but they would also put wall on each other so that you couldn't. They would do this thing where they would attack one sister. And she would have wall on you, so you could not use wall on yourself. They'd attack the sister, it'd bounce off her, and it would attack you. There's Such a pain in the ass. Three sisters. One was the kid sister, one was the fat sister, and one was the hot one. <laughs> and, right, right. And the uh, <laughs> fat one always healed, right? Yeah. Cindy. Yeah, so you had to kill the fat one first. Yep. Um, yeah, and I, those, those mega sisters are bitches. I remember we, the, we could not beat them. We called the Nintendo hotline. <laughs> and the guy's like, well, you need to kill the heavy set sister first. <laughs> and we were like, oh, that's such a good idea because she healed. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was a tough one. Uh, guy gets from Earthbound was another mm-hmm. one that I wrote down. It's yeah. A fucking weird-ass battle, really. Um, <laughs> my brother Matthew called me drunk one night. Actually, a couple weeks ago before he came, and he said, I don't know about, did you know this about Gygus? That he's a fetus. You have to fight a fetus, man. And I was like, oh, really? I, I didn't notice it. He's like, yeah, it's a fetus. And the, the noise in the background says, it feels good. And, and I was like, it, it says that on the game? I don't remember. He's like, yeah, I, I watched a video. And it's actually the producer of that game walked into a movie theater, and there's a girl getting raped, and it said, it feels good on the movie, so he used that in the game. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Match strong. <laughs> there, there, from what I read, there is actually some truth to that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's supposedly based on some traumatic experience yeah. that the uh, the writer or producer, whatever you want to call him, had, and he based that the, the boss battle on that experience. And it's a it's a really disturbing That's battle, tricky. actually. Yeah. Uh, a few of my honorable mentions I had down: uh, Mecha Ridley from uh, Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime Three Corruption. Uh, great boss battle. There was the Twilight Fossil Star Lord from Twilight Princess which you have to ride the spinner on to actually kill him. Uh, that was a great battle, and uh, those were my only two that I had. Uh, I actually ha- did have Ganon from Ocarina of Time as my, uh, as my honorable mention. I also had King Koopa from Mario 64. Oh. Uh, I have that one right now that honorable mention. Yeah, just because you actually got to interact when you, you didn't have to just jump on someone's head right, to beat yeah. him. You had to spin him around, yep, and yep, that's, yep. that's what... Just the spinning, it could have been, I don't know, fucking Mother Brain and Samus if Samus had to spin around to beat her. But just the the point of using the... It was innovative. Yeah, using the 64 controller yeah. to actually spin him. Samus yeah. wouldn't spin Mother Brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was kind of a first of its, of its time. Yeah. You gotta give it some props. Yeah. You like throw around those like bomb things. Yeah. Uh, I also had Bagon. I, I was debating on Bagon and Demon Wall from Final Fantasy Two, but Bagon, you're, it's your first time back to Bannon, the Castle Baron or Baron Castle, uh, Bannon or Baron. Baron. I just say Baron. Yeah, Baron <laughs> Castle. Baron Final Fantasy. II. Okay, so you you get back to Baron Castle and uh, Bagon. He's like, oh, let me take you to the throne room where the king is, and you know, <laughs> he's taking you and like finally, it, I it's just like moody, dark. You don't know what to expect, and all of them and Torm's like shut the front door. Something's wrong. Yeah, they they know something's up, but then you know Cecil's like, uh, I like Vagon. They take him to Vagon takes him to a room and transforms, and uh, you have to fight him. Each you have to beat both of his arms and his whole body yeah. uh, to take him down. That's fucking sad when Colin and Torm themselves in the stone. That was yeah. crazy. I hated that part. <laughs> so of course, you know, me and Brandon being twins, we're like, oh, there's twins in this game. Uh, nope, they die. <laughs> so come back to like, Phoenix Down won't work on them. Yeah. Yeah. They had some cool spells, too. I remember using Flare a lot. Mm-hmm. Comet. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I also had the Mega Sisters as my honorable mention. Um, that was pretty much it for me. Yep. That's all I got. Tales from the Gym. Ben? 
I haven't been to the gym, but I what I've started doing is changing my diet. So I want to get I don't want to stress my body out too much because once I drop in calories and start going to the gym, it gets too overwhelming and my body can't handle both. So I'm starting with my diet first, and then I'm going to start going to the gym. But I've actually a couple nights out of the week I have went and hit my punching bag for about a half hour. So uh, I've been doing that. Uh, dropped two more pounds, so I'm going in the right direction down to 351. I I'd be on that punching bag every night. I'd be like kickboxer. You know? <laughs> That's what it's pretty much like when when um, when I get pissed off. I I just go out there. People might think I'm killing people in the garage because I just rah, rah, <laughs> and just start well on it. it start, I need to put weights on it. It starts like tipping over and stuff. So oh um, I let my son watch kickboxer with me for the first time <laughs> and uh, just. Talking about that when uh, you know the they're in there getting ready for the fight for the first time against Tung Po, um, he's like, "Hey, little bro, go get me some ice." And then so Jean Claude Van Damme's like, "You got it," and he goes and gets some ice, and he hears it, boom, <laughs> boom, and he walks close and he's like, boom, boom, and then Willie looks at me and he's getting scared. He's like, <laughs> "What is that?" And then. And then you you get Jean Claude Van Damme gets to the inch the doorway of Tong Po's training room, and you're boom, and then you see Tong Po just kicking the cement the cement post with the cement falling from the from the ceiling. And he goes and tries to warn his brother. And he's yeah. Like, no, he's kicking it. He, it's falling from the ceiling, and he's like, I can handle it. Can he do this? And he goes, <laughs> Yeah, he does. <laughs> can he move off me? <laughs> don't matter. And then and I was like, no, he's not as fast. But just Tung Po looking at Venom and kicking that post, Willie was like, is he really kicking that? I said, yes. That's how people... <laughs> I said, that's how people in Thailand roll. And then he was like, I'm never going there. <laughs> So, uh, actually, a funny story for my uh, 351 pounds. Our smoke alarm started, the battery started dying. So, you know, you go, bing! Mm-hmm. Oh, I hate that shit. Yeah. Bing! It came on every time at 8 o'clock in the night. Don't know why. I probably wanted it to be changed, which isn't a problem, but my smoke alarm is on the top of the fucking ceiling. <laughs> so, we don't have a ladder. How high is the ceiling? Uh, at that point, probably 15 feet. <laughs> So we didn't have a ladder for two nights. We had to hear that beep. So finally, Karen got a ladder. Uh, went to go drop Jordan off at her friend's house. I got home while she was gone. Uh, took the ladder. Said, you know, I, I could do this. So I opened up the ladder. Well, Karen was going to change it. Huh? Karen was going to change the smoke alarm. You're going to have her climb the 15 foot ladder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're like, I'm going to surprise her. I'm going to do some man work around here. <laughs> yeah, because well, you know me and heights and everything. I could go on the first three runs, no problem. But when I'm on the fourth run, shaking, the ladder is shaking, and I look at the sticker, it says 250 pound limit. <laughs> And I'm like, I got 101 pounds on this thing. <laughs> so I'm sitting up there, the fourth one, scared as hell. I actually made it high enough to put my arm on top of the um, the skyline, the tall wall, you know how it breaks. I'm sitting there like this, shaking. So the, it's on there crooked, so I need to take my hand and kind of steady myself with one hand and try to take it. It won't work with one hand, so i got to use both hands. <laughs> so I'm probably 10 feet off the ground on a weak ladder, using both hands like this, <laughs> Sky, my cat, comes up behind me and starts climbing on the ladder. <laughs> you fucking cat, get the fuck off the ladder right now. And she, she won't move. She, she must be concerned. I didn't want to say it loud enough for the kids to come out of the room because they're right there. They'll run into the ladder and kill me. So I'm sitting there. I finally get the alarm off. And of course, you can't access the battery without taking off the, the home r- wire don't know how to do that. I'm sitting up there fidgeting with it. Maybe if I pinch this, it finally came out, changed the battery, scary as hell, almost fell. I, the ladder was going like this. <laughs> Growing apart, I swear. Oh, and I, I was scared shitless, but I did it. You know, because my foot is as big as the fourth rung, so I had to fit both of my feet on there. It was, it was horrible, but I did it. I probably sweated 20 pounds off right there in water weight. <laughs> Uh, Karen got home. She said, "What happened? Were you uh, were you working out in the garage?" He <laughs> said, "Nope. I changed the I changed the battery up there. <laughs> Work out in itself. So <laughs> it's scared. It's scary as hell." <laughs>
Yeah. I wanna, no gym this week. Uh, going to probably hit it, if not next week, the week after. I want to give a shout out to the floaters out there. I've noticed you guys have been staying out of the lane. <laughs> so, so thank you for listening and um, no hurt feelings. You know, I, I would love to participate with you guys in this thing. I just can't see doing it with Vegas coming up in three weeks. Oh, I know. We're taking a road trip in a few weeks to Vegas, and I'm going to have a buffet at least once a day. And <laughs> there's no point in it for me. I mean, I, I, I appreciate what you guys are doing, but I hope you guys are going to pig out with me while we're there. I don't know. Oh, no, we're not going to be all hoity-toity with go. the buffet. We're going to... You know, both the wall. no no holds barred. There you go. Okay. Zeus and Hulk Hogan. I'm feeling a lot better now. <laughs> no, if there there's, I'm taking that time off. I took a whole week off work. I'm gonna spend a couple of days in Vegas with these guys, and I'm gonna take the bus down to San Diego where my wife is gonna be. Um, spending my time there. That that week's gonna be a wash. I'm not even gonna worry about no diet and right. nothing. It's it's gonna be on. I'm feeling a lot better now. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Uh, in terms of eating wise, the only time I really ate bad um, was last Sunday. We took uh, Jamila and I took our cousin Alexis out for her graduation party dinner. I guess. Why? <laughs> you know, she she graduated high school, and you know, it, it was not going to be an easy feat for her. Woo! Uh, let's give her a card. <laughs> graduated high school. So um, didn't need pregnant. Yeah, she did. she didn't get pregnant. That's cool. Uh, so you know she was failing throughout high school and until junior year she turned it around. So she pulled it out and graduated. So Jamila and I took her to Cheesecake Factory for lunch. I had a Caesar salad, which is the best salad I ever had there. Uh, I had a half Hawaiian, half combo pizza, and some Korean tacos. Those Korean tacos are no joke. They're so delicious. They need, they need sriracha though. Yeah, they do. Uh, I I almost brought some with me, but I <laughs> forgot. I was in a di- Denny's diner one time. They didn't have. They went through a phase where they didn't have Tabasco. And this ghetto couple comes in, lesbian chicks. Mm. Uh, you guys don't have your Tabasco anymore, huh? That's okay. We we brought our own. And she got <laughs> her jacket pocket, her denim <laughs> shirt pocket, and brought it out. I was like, dang, that's hardcore. Oh, you guys are gonna have to take me to this cheesecake factory. I want to try the these Korean. Pies. Oh yeah, we yeah. can go. Yeah. Do it. That's good. Maybe right, we'll, we'll definitely have to bring some sriracha. Yeah. So uh, I had a couple bad things this week. Uh, one was on Wednesday night or Thursday night, the night the alarm started going off. And I was like, you know, screw this. we got to go to Winco to get some food. I'm going to go next door to Carolina's. And I didn't get a torta. I got a California taco, which is amazing. It's <laughs> a flour <laughs> tortilla with carne asada. French fries, cheese, and pico de gallo. <laughs> Get home and throw some sour cream on the puppy. You're good to go. Is the flour tortilla deep fried? No. <laughs> okay. Just baked. Uh, and the other thing was the new San Diego burrito from Carl's Jr., which Karen got us yesterday. We actually shared it. So good. It's got French fries in it, too. <laughs> and a chipotle sauce. <laughs> Put French fries in anything. Milkshakes. Yeah. Oh. You never Oreo, heard of that? Oreo's oh, movie. man. I never heard of that. You never lived if you haven't dipped a French fry in a milkshake. Uh, I had a French guy, but yeah. <laughs> it. And then I think, and then the o- only other thing I had that was bad was on uh, Wednesday or Thursday, um, we went to Round Table and we got a large West Coast pizza, half West Coast, half pepperoni, and a salad bar. And I had three pieces of that pizza and, some, and two salads. Not impressed with the West Coast. Uh-huh. They're always, always still... Yeah, Maui's always amazing. Yeah, Maui's yeah. always that, that stuff is no joke. Uh, Sit me down with a large Maui salad, <laughs> even though I can't finish it, I'll go throw up just so I get have some more. <laughs> and we didn't, we didn't get pan crust. We got original. Yeah, the pan crust is the best, but original is pretty good. Get a pan crust Maui salad with some Parmesan twist, lightly baked. Oh man, and some ranch half past. They'll eat. They, they push it uh, halfway through so they're not so crispy. They're like doughy That's still. That's nice. That's nice. Have you ever had that? I, I've never. I know what you're talking about. I've, I've had. I've never had like made a special request, but I, <laughs> I have had them that way. And you could ask for it. Do that uh, next time. I'll do it. They uh, pass it through halfway, and they'll, they'll they know what you're talking about. Nice. <laughs> they're amazing. Those those Parmesan twists. They are. Yeah, especially with the good ranch. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so this week we're going to stick with the Mega Man. We're going to see if we could go through Mega Man 3. 
Uh, hopefully it doesn't give us as much trouble as two. Uh, I'm guessing it will. It will. <laughs> but uh, I, it should be fine. I've attempted it. I've uh, Spoiler alert, I've died probably five, six times already. Oh, yeah, you can't lie this time because I watched yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was there watching. <laughs> yeah, still much harder than part two. Uh, so, $10 gift card question. Uh, answer it, get a $10 gift card. Question, in the original Super Mario Brothers for Nintendo, which level do you find finally find Princess Peach? Super Mario Brothers Part 1, original Nintendo. What castle do you find Princess Peach in? That does it for this week's episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. Happy hunting. See you later. Uh.